We all know that colour evokes emotional responses and can be used in film in this way. However, deciding on a colour palette can be overwhelming and difficult to control the consistency of without the appropriate planning. Perhaps you've shot many films and haven't even thought about using colour. I've shot many films and only really taken colour into consideration on recent projects from perhaps maybe the last couple of years. When I'm talking about colour, I don't just mean whether you're light and warm or cool with the colour temperature, but it's a level beyond that where you begin to craft a tone, a mood and a feeling behind your film. Crafting a colour palette can carry your visuals and separate you from the rest of the pack and excel your cinematography in a way that you've never really considered previously. I was talking with a friend about colour palettes and he asked me, what is it about genre that inspires colour palettes? And the example he mentioned was in Blade Runner 2049 and how it's very blue and some dark grungy greens and I didn't really know how to answer it at that point so my answer was well I guess colour palettes are typically based on stereotypes. In Blade Runner the blue tones represent a cold corporate future. In A Cure for Wellness the green overtone is very sickly just so happens the film is about sick people and Mad Max Fury Road is well it's bright orange because it's in a blistering desert. Green was used in the Matrix in 1999 to represent the colour of the computer code. Inside the Matrix has a cast of green uh, as the world they're in is literally a computer simulation whereas when they aren't in the Matrix it's cold, it's blue and very bleak. Let's take something which isn't so obvious though. Sicario is a great film about government corruption based around the Mexican drug trade. More specifically, the film follows an FBI agent who joins a task force to combat the war against the cartel. The film asks questions about morality and what's right and what's wrong, as our protagonist tries to reflect her morality uh, into the corrupt world of the justice system that she serves. Taking every single frame in the movie and squishing it down shows a colour palette that's made of beige and represents the ambiguity of what's right and wrong. On a side note, uh, I'll link down below uh, an analysis video um, which shows the use of colour in Sicario. I highly recommend checking it out because it's very good. When working on your own colour palette for your own film, the, the DP and the production designer need to work together in pre-production to ensure that the colours are what the director wanted. Remember that colour palette is the biggest contributor to the overall tone and mood of the film. So it's important as a, a director of photography that we do it justice. I've taken a film called Monange. It's an excellent example of a film with a very thought out and consistent colour scheme. It's not as obvious as something like The Matrix, uh, but let's take a look at it. So let's take a look at the overall palette by squishing down the frames uh, once again like we did with Sicario. The colours are very organic, earthy, warm autumn colours. Uh, getting these colours doesn't start with just, you know, pushing it in the grade. The film is a romance about an invisible boy called Angel who is kept secret from the world by his mother as she fears that if anyone finds out about him, he'll be taken away. The invisible boy, Angel, falls in love with a blonde girl called Madeline, but when Madeline is able to have her eyesight recovered with modern technology, Angel hides from her because not only is he a secret from the world and he should stay that way, but he's also worried that she'll freak out, move away and that he'll never see her again. The cinematographer uses some great techniques to warm up the room whenever the girl is in the scene. As a cinematographer, there are ways that you can tie together a colour palette. So let's take a look at a few. Here in this shot you can see that the room is very neutral and white and empty. However, when our love interest steps into the shot she's here, seen here packing her stuff, the room is very warm. This was actually done with collaboration between the director of photography and the production designer by changing out the cloth material on the windows to an unbleached beige fabric instead of just a white one. What this does is that when you shine a light through it, the, the light that carries through actually washes a, a tone of colour throughout the, the image. Reed Morano is an exceptional DP and director who utilises this technique often. If you check out any of her work, you'll see an example of this. Here are two images from her film that she shot last year, I Think We're Alone Now, in which this exact technique is used. You can see here there's orange curtains here that carry throughout the image and later on in the film there's uh, blue curtains here as well which also carry throughout the scene. Further in lighting, the film occasionally uses practicals to light up otherwise dark environments uh, with warm lighting. You can see here in this shot they're using a, a tungsten practical um, when it's very much balanced for daylight you can see here on the left hand side. Um, so the practical was used to, to warm up with the presence of our main female lead. The film's budget was quite low and otherwise didn't have too much going on as far as cinematography equipment. 
The cast alone is brilliant because they've cast a female lead with beautifully striking hair. Something that the DP consistently does, especially on close-ups, is to ensure that our lead female actress's hair is lit up. Uh, this is adding a rich, vibrant image as well, uh, alongside her costume, which is uh, quite often red or very warm colours. Something else that I wanted to just mention in this film regarding how the filmmakers have used colours is the colours of red and blue for the uh, for Angel, the Invisible Boy's mother. Um, it, it represents sort of her mental decline throughout the film. The setup to the film's main storyline starts with Angel's parents. His father is a magician and his mother's the magician's assistant. The film starts with a magic show and a bright red light during their parents' magic show. But when the magician father mysteriously disappears during the act, her mental state declines rapidly. The director and the production designer have used a dark blue colour to symbolise the change in Angel's mother's mental state. And as it gets worse and worse, she's framed out of the frame more and more. And eventually, we're left pretty much just looking at this blue wall. It's a really interesting creative choice that the director and the DP probably spoke about, um, but especially it's the colours um, which are carried through the production design. And although, although the cinematography it's not been lit, for that blue they have used composition which is controlled by the cinematographers in order to frame that blue into the shop so uh, i guess you could use that as an example of how the cinematographer is also worked with and utilized the production design to benefit the storytelling uh, finally just fa as far as finalizing the look in the grade it's an important step which can be often overlooked on smaller budget films or student films in monange uh, to Contribute to the earthly autumn colours uh, that you can see, you can tell that the greens have been dis uh, desaturated quite a lot. In a digital camera, there is twice as many green receptors as there are red and blue in the centre, which is why green is very saturated by default, especially in the Rex 79 colour space, where none of the colours are alterated. Bringing down the saturation and perhaps pushing them into a warmer territory may seem like such a small adjustment, however, it will impact the image quite a lot. Furthermore, the film has very warm highlights as well, which are pushed in the grey too, as you're unable to get these warm highlights on set. As the brighter the light gets, the less saturated a colour becomes, so you have to push that in the grade in order to compensate for that colour loss. To conclude, when you're next DPing a film, just think about ways that you can tie together the film's colour palette with lights, you know, perhaps shining and bouncing lights from materials, lighting certain parts of the costume, or perhaps maybe just using practicals. You can also of course use coloured gels and lights to cast colours to contribute towards your colour palette. I'd also recommend going to the Leaf Filters website because they also show every single gel that they produce so you can go through and see without owning the, the gels, the colours that they offer, the technicalities behind them and what gels that you may be interested in acquiring for your film. But that's it for this video, if you have any comments of course leave them below. I'll be making more videos about cinematography in the future so if you'd like to see more, uh, stick around by subscribing. Peace.